This is a lecture for CSC 3100 web programming in spring 2017. My name is Jerry Gennad, I'm Professor of Computer Science at Tennessee Tech University. In this lecture, we're going to spend some time doing a, uh, an overview of Ruby and the Ruby language. Um, we'll just spend so real quick <coughs> um, glance at uh, the language features. Um, I've posted on the YouTube channel additional uh, videos on Ruby and tutorials on Ruby. Um, so feel free to take a look at those as well. Uh, you'll probably want to take a look at the text that we're using for the course, uh, Chapter 4 in the Agile Web Development with Rails um, provides a an overview uh, and much of what <clears throat> I'll be describing here is based on um, some of the things that you'll find in that chapter. So to begin with, uh, Ruby is um, it's a language that, it's inter that is interpreted. Um, it's uh, certainly being used in a lot of uh, web applications that are out there um, these days. Um, and like I said, it's, it's interpreted, so it's uh, you compare that with being compiled. Um, so languages like C++ or Java, uh, especially those courses that you've taken here at Tennessee Tech, um, would fall under the, the other side, um, the, the compiled side. Uh, we don't have to compile our Ruby code in order to run it. Um, so when we run Rails server, um, the code is, is uh, interpreted. Um, you know, based on, of course, um, the architecture that uh, we talked about in some previous lectures. The, the language is also object-oriented, so uh, contrast that with being procedural or functional, although uh, in our program here you've only really seen object-oriented languages like C++ and Java. Um, and, and so it should be really familiar to you in terms of the the different uh, features of the language, so the classes and methods, use of instance variables and class variables, that kind of thing. So anyway, um, again, please do take a uh, take a look at the uh, the textbook because um, you'll see other other details there as well. So as far as Ruby names are concerned, um, so uh, we have uh, variables, methods, um, method parameters, method names. That all basically start with lowercase letters or underscore. Um, so variables like my var or my variable, mv2000, um, all of those would be the types of variables that you would expect to see in uh, in Ruby. Uh, I do want to mention a, a couple of things. So <clears throat> um, the underscore, which I, I put here at the bottom, the convention is to use underscores over camel case. So if you're writing something like student number, uh, the convention in Ruby um, code would be to use the underscore rather than doing something like camel case. Um, when we create classes in Ruby, uh, the instance, instance variables, so the, the variables that are persistent, um, persistent in an object, start with an, an ampersand, so, or at, so ampersand ID, ampersand student number, for instance, uh, would be instance variables. Actually, something that I haven't shown here is that uh, you can also have, have class variables. So these are singletons that are true or, or that are maintained across all instances of a class. Um, you would use a double ampersand for that, which um, I haven't shown here, but it's certainly um, uh, something that can be useful, especially if you're, you're employing something like the singleton pattern. Now Ruby uses arrays just like most languages. Um, you have the, the availability of an array. Um, so it uses the typical structure of using the, the square brackets. You can define, um, declare the values of a, an array uh, as I've shown here. Uh, with uh, the square bracket and then the list of the, the elements. Uh, you can mix the types for Ruby arrays. So you see here that I've got an integer, I've got a string, and I have um, a real number there. Um, and uh, Ruby doesn't have any issues with uh, us being able to mix the, um, uh, mix the types. And then um, 
let's see, at the, uh, at the bottom just shows different ways of accessing um, uh, parts of an array. Um, and you see there at the bottom, if you want to append something to the list or append something to the array, you can use the, um, uh, the double less thans to, to do that. Now Ruby also supports the, the use of symbols as indices or identifiers in constructs like hashes. Uh, these are associative arrays where, where you can um, uh, create pairs of, of um, indices or pairs of keys uh, and match those up with values. And I've shown that here at the top. If I were going to create a, a hash, <clears throat> I can use these symbols like first name, last name, title. Um, so something that prepends the use of the, uh, the colon. Uh, one of the things I wanted to note is that you could also, you could omit the use of the, uh, the equal greater than. Um, and as long as you put a space between the, uh, uh, the item and the, uh, sort of the key and the value, for instance, uh, then you, uh, you can basically construct these hashes. Uh, one of the things to note also is that when you're declaring the hash, you can use the colon at the beginning or the end. Although when you do access the, um, the item, which I haven't shown an example here, I would do something like my profile and then access this like it was an array, so I'd use square brackets. Um, and then I would use the form that's used at the top here with the colon at the front and the name of the key in order to access the, uh, the value. In Ruby, methods are specified with this, uh, this following pattern. So I think the big thing here to make note of is the, uh, is the def and then the end. Um, you can um, specify a return value, uh, sorry, the return statement and then a return value. If you don't include return in the return value, what the methods will do is they'll take whatever the last statement was that, uh, that was evaluated and it'll try to output that as the um, as the return value. I think it's probably better to go ahead and explicitly specify the return value uh, for the methods. Um, logic statements, just as in, in, in other language, other scripting languages, I should say, um, um, are constructed like this. So you have an if and then a condition, logical condition, and then any number of statements um, you can use an else if with condition to uh, provide a, a branching condition as well as a an ending else clause for the um, for the statement. So you know, if this is true, execute this. Else, if this is true, execute this. Else, both of those are false. Execute the uh, the third statement. In Ruby, the iteration uh, construct uh, is shown here. Uh, you can use a while condition statement um, construct um, with the block being ended or um, closed with the end. There is also a, an each um, construct where if I have a list of items, then I can iterate over each one of the items in the list by using the dot each and then do the, the statements. And finally, um, since Ruby is an object-oriented language, I imagine that we want to be able to create classes, and this is what uh, the structure of the classes would look like, as well as an example. Um, and so you have, you know, any number of, of declarations that could occur. Um, so something like uh, I have here in the first line, um, and this actually is a declaration where I'm taking a value or taking a uh, uh, something that's defined in the superclass application record. Um, the other thing is uh, you can declare methods, of course, in a class, and so you'll see here two uh, two methods that have been defined, um, and then uh, and you can again have any number of methods within the class. Um, anyway, there's, um, there's certainly a lot more to this uh, and more to um, what you can do with uh, defining 
defining Ruby methods and classes and whatnot, and I do invite you to take a look at the text for that, as well as other resources that are out there for, uh, for doing Ruby programming. So anyway, that concludes uh, this lecture. Uh, again, just a really quick overview of the features of the language. I don't think that it's too terribly different from other languages that you've seen already. The main thing is really to get your, your mind wrapped over the fact that one, that it's interpreted, um, but then also some of these uh, differences with some of the languages that you've seen, especially in the use of things like hashes. So anyway, that concludes this lecture.